As a filmmaker and former Sony FS5 Mark II shooter, I've been dying to get my hands on this camera. And once I got it, I quickly decided that the only way to truly review the Sony FX6 was to shoot an actual film with it. Now, I don't want to go over things that you may have already heard about, either from someone else or in my other video about the Sony FX6, which you can check out right here. But that being said, I love this camera. But if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't have bought it for two big reasons. On paper, this camera blows me away. And getting it in my hands, rigged up and ready to go just feels right. It's just so ergonomic and really intuitive for how I like to operate camera. But after shooting my short with it, which you can see here, I had some rather interesting thoughts. Now, as a disclaimer, I did shoot cassette on the Atomos Ninja 5 in ProRes RAW, and then I converted it into Cinema DNG with an amazing app, which you can check out down below in the description. It's an unpaid endorsement, but I think it's amazing. But I did this so I could edit this footage in DaVinci Resolve. So take where I'm going with this how you will, given that I didn't use the intended camera's internal codex. Intended cameras in the camera's intended internal codex. Let's talk about image quality. Two of the biggest reasons that I absolutely love this camera are the internal ND filter and the dual native ISOs of 800 and 12,800 for the lower noise in low light situations. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again, but I really like minimal lighting and I love to use available natural and practical sources whenever possible. I did this on my last short cassette and the FX6 just made it so unbelievably easy. Being able to dial my exposure just right with a high ISO and the internal ND filter is great. And being able to turn off in-camera noise reduction on the FX6 is wonderful. It's something that I can just do in post and I'd rather use my computer's resources to handle it than use my camera's resources while shooting, which is the results are never as good. I'd like to talk about the full frame sensor too, but this is largely the reason for what I just mentioned being possible. Bigger sensor equals better low light performance. And for me, it's as simple as that. Let's talk about the design and ergonomics. The compact and modular design of the Sony FX6 made it incredibly easy to handle and rig according to my shooting needs on set. After shooting on a Sony FS5, every camera that I got afterwards just felt worse. The camera is unbelievably ergonomic. The controls, layout, and handling are so intuitive and well-placed, allowing me to adjust settings on the fly without disrupting my flow. It's also great to go from sticks to handheld and back without any hassle whatsoever because everything is just kind of where you want it. This camera is so comfortable for handheld work and it's something that I've really missed in other cameras, especially those prosumer DSLR type mirrorless cameras that are meant to be hybrid shooting models. Now we also have a ton of customizable buttons which I find almost necessary for me and my type of work at this point. Let's talk about battery life. With the included battery, the Sony FX6 has decent battery life, but the camera really shines in the ability to attach a handful of V-mount adapters. I have the tilt and I use a 100 watt hour battery and it lasts me all day. And this was one less thing to worry about on set, especially as a single person crew. If you haven't used a V-mount battery on your camera and you're constantly worried about your battery performance, I can't recommend that you find a way to rig a V-mount enough. But let's get into some of the not so great things, right? That's why you're here. So the second biggest downside of the Sony FX6, it's the price point. It falls in the higher range of affordable cinema cameras, but it still may not be affordable for all filmmakers or videographers, especially those on a budget or those just starting out. But I will say you get what you pay for. The reason why I started out on a Sony FS5 Mark II is because I attended Full Sail University for their digital cinematography program. And if you go there now, instead of Sony FS5 Mark II, you get a Sony FX6. I'm not saying that I recommend that you go to Full Sail University and find yourself in a bunch of debt, but just putting it out there. Actually, if you want to see me talk about my experience with film school, especially Full Sail, because I know a lot of you have probably considered it, let me know down below in the comments and we'll talk about it. But what about the biggest downside? 
Why wouldn't I buy it again? Well, it's really simple. The Sony FX3 exists, and it's $2,000 less. The most recent firmware update for the Sony FX3 has made it a truly remarkable camera, regardless of its ergonomics and other things that I may have said really make the FX6 great. If you can't afford $6,000 for $4,000, the FX3 is amazing, especially now. True, 24 frames per second in the new update, a 1 over 48th shutter, and DCI 4K. You slap a variable ND filter on your favorite lenses and you're just as good to go as if you had the FX6 for most situations. The FX6 is small and ergonomic, it weighs two pounds, sure. But the FX3 is even smaller and has a ton of quarter 20 mounting points all over the body and also has a ton of customizable buttons. So let's take a look at a comparison shot. One in the FX3 and one in the FX6, same lens, same settings. And you let me know if you can tell the difference. I know when I was looking at both of these cameras, it was really hard for me to make the distinction. And I ended up with both and credit card debt. But could you tell the difference? If not, maybe the FX3 is better for you and your budget. Again, I love my Sony FX6 and I've already bought it. I'm not going to get rid of it. Not anytime soon anyway, but if I had to go back and do it again, I'm fairly certain that I would have been just as happy with only owning the FX3, especially after this last firmware update. Actually, if I knew this firmware update was coming, it may have actually swayed me to get a Blackmagic Ursa 12K. Now, of course, the FX3 can't have noise reduction turned off, which for me, it is a turnoff, but it does have in-body stabilization, something that the FX6 is lacking, but I never use it because, again, I'd rather do it in post with my computer. It's more powerful and generally produces better results anyway. You can also fly the FX3 on smaller gimbals if that's your thing. I do it on the DJI RS3, and it works wonderful. But if you do need internal ND filters, SDI, a better battery life, shutter angle, and a more robust body that's more modular, and you need great codecs, I, I can't recommend the Sony FX6 enough. But with that being said, that's a wrap on my review. And I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love talking with you guys. I always do. But don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more reviews, tutorials, and other videos designed to help us all with our creative processes. But for now, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention today and how precious it is. Again, my name is Jared, and I hope to talk to you again real soon.